All right, boys and girls, we're gonna look at adding mixed numbers. So really, this is just an extension of what we've been doing in class when we've been adding and subtracting fractions with unlike denominators. Um, you know, we talked about mixed numbers before Christmas break and how to change mixed numbers to improper fractions. Well, there is a good chance in fifth grade that you could see some problems where you just have to add or subtract mixed numbers. And so um, on this video, we're just going to focus on adding mixed numbers and the algorithm uh, that that's going to cover those types of problems. So for this first example, uh, you're looking at three and one fourth plus four and two fifths. What I usually teach my students is to kind of think of this problem in two parts. You've got uh, you've got whole numbers that you're adding together. That's one part. And then you have fractions that you're adding together as your second part. Um, it really doesn't matter the order that you do them in. You know, sometimes I'll tell my students like, well, okay, there's kind of a, a harder problem. Then there's an easier problem. Um, if you were to look at this one, you know, the easy problem would be just doing three plus four. Because your whole numbers adding those together, that's going to take you back to, you know, first grade math. And that's not going to be too difficult. Uh, your one-fourth plus two-fifths is going to be a lot harder because that's your true fifth grade problem. And so it just kind of depends on how you want to do it. You can kind of switch it around. You could do it, you know, whichever way works best for you. Uh, but really, that's kind of the, the big part of these problems is just seeing it and, you know, kind of like you have two separate parts to it. So uh, I'm going to start with pulling out the whole numbers first. So on this problem, I'm already going to think, that if I were to work this one, I'm just gonna pull out, you know, the three plus the four and I'm gonna have seven. So I'm gonna write seven off to the side. Um, that part's pretty much done. My next part is I'm gonna pull out the fractions. So I'm gonna write one fourth plus two fifths as a separate problem. And I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna kind of think about all those steps about adding uh, fractions with unlike denominators. And so really our first step here is, is going to go find least common multiple or least common denominator. And so really I'm thinking about my fours and my fives. And again, kind of depending on how your teacher wants this to look, but if you are showing all your work, then you might write out all your fours and you might write out all your fives. Um, for me in my class, this is kind of one of those things where if my students are where they need to be and they can do that step mentally, then I'm okay with that. Um, but if you're wanting to show your complete work there, um, you might want to stop and think, okay, if I wrote out all my fours, what would that look like? If I wrote out all my fives, what would that look like? So I'm going to show it just to, uh, you know, make sure everybody's on the same page that this is the same thing that we've been doing. So I'm going to write my fours. And as I'm writing those, I'm kind of just thinking in my head um, about, you know, a lot of times that's kind of what's going through your mind is, okay, well, what's going to happen next? Well, if I write my fives, I know my fives are only going to have fives or zeros in it. And so I could start writing my fives and I could show that eventually I would hit 20 and 20 is on both lists. So my least common denominator or my least common multiple in this case is going to be 20 or I'm gonna be thinking about 20 ifs. All right, so I'm gonna come kind of right in here and I'm gonna stack up these fractions and then next to it, I'm gonna create what a lot of times what I call a fourth grade problem because that's really what you're trying to do. You're trying to create a fourth grade problem that has common denominators. I'm gonna have common denominators of 20 ifs and I'm gonna start thinking about you know, um, finding an equivalent fraction for one fourth and two fifths. So on this top one, I know my relationship between four and 20 is times five and one times five is five. So I have five twentieths at the bottom. I know my relationship is times four and that's going to be two times four, two times four is eight. And so I, again, I know I've showed this before on some videos, um, especially I, I do this a ton of my classes, just kind of stop doing, you know, or stop 
kind of stop and think about where you're at in the problem. And it's like, okay, everything else kind of goes away. That box right there is where your focus needs to be. And so everything else now, I'm not thinking about writing out my facts. I'm not thinking about, you know, one fourth plus two fifths really anymore. I'm thinking about five twentieths plus eight twentieths because now I've made that fourth grade problem that has common denominators. So this is not gonna to be too bad. Eight plus five is 13. And so I'm gonna write 13 twentieths out to the side. The last part about these problems is just kind of combining everything together. So I'm gonna circle the seven that I had uh, originally when I pulled out my whole numbers and then I'm gonna circle my 13 twentieths. And now I'm thinking about just putting it together because again, in the back of my mind, I'm still adding. I'm, I'm, I'm taking three and one fourth plus four and two fifths. So now that I've separated them out, I have my whole number, I have my, my fraction, I just wanna combine them together. So I'm gonna change colors here just to kind of show up here. If, you know, if I put everything together, I've got seven and 13 twentieths as a final answer. And I know it's final because I know 13 twentieths can't be simplified. And um, basically, I'm just looking at, you know, at this point, I'd either, uh, you know, maybe kind of double check my work or I'm moving on to the next problem because I've done everything I can. So these problems aren't too bad. It just takes a little bit of practice. And it's just like I said, it's kind of just an extension on what we've already done. OK, this particular problem, I'm going to go a little bit quicker. I'm going to not show as much work. I'm going to take a couple of shortcuts that I think some of you are probably going to be ready to take. Uh, I'm going to do this one backwards, though, meaning I'm going to pull out the fraction first. So I'm going to pull out one-third plus one-half, and I'm going to put my focus there first. So one-third plus one-half. Um, if I set that up, and I'm going to do it underneath, and I'm going to go ahead and stack them where it kind of looks like a traditional addition problem. Well, if I wrote my threes out and I wrote my twos out, um, I'm, I, that one's pretty easy. I think most kids that can imagine what that would look like and could imagine that six would be your least common denominator or least common multiple. So I'm going to go ahead and change this to sixth. So I'm going to make my, um, my equivalent fractions one third. If I go to a sixth, that's times in it by two. So one times two is two six. And remember, let me just show that again, kind of what I'm doing. I'm kind of taking a shortcut there. But remember, when you're creating an equivalent fraction and you're multiplying, you're multiplying the numerator and the denominator by the same number. So if my relationship was times two, I've got to do times two at the bottom and at the top. Same with the, the one half. My relationship is times three, so it's going to be times three at the top. And that's going to be three six. So I'm gonna put my little box here. This is now my, my fourth grade problem. It's easy. It's just gonna be two uh, six plus three six, which out to the side, I'm gonna write that answer of five six. Five six I know cannot be simplified because it's in consecutive order or it's sometimes called counting order where they're back to back on the number line. So I'm good there. And so really now, I just, I'm just i going to go back up to my whole numbers. My whole numbers were 4 and 2, so that gives me 6. And so I'm just going to put this all together. My final answer to this problem is going to be 6 and 5, 6. So this was a pretty easy one. All right, the last example here, I'm going to go through this same thing. I'm going to choose this time to pull out my whole numbers. 6 plus 2 is going to give me 8. Now I'm going to pull out 3 fourths and 1 fifth. I'm going to go ahead and stack those up. All right, fourths and fifths. If I wrote out my fours and I wrote out my fives, um, you know, we kind of already seen one like that. So I think we're going to have 20ths again. And so I'm going to pick 20ths as my least common denominator. I'm still going to go find those uh, relationships. How do I get from one number to the other? So from 4 to 20 is times 5. 3 times 5 is 15. Pretty easy. Bottom one's going to be times 4. 5 times 4 is 20. So 1 times 4 is 4. 
And so now I'm going to put that box. I'm looking at 15 plus 4. 15 plus 4 is going to give you 19. 19 twentieths is going to be a fraction that can't be simplified. Again, it's counting order. It's consecutive order. So 8 and 19 twentieths is going to be your final answer. Um, the only thing I would say that we didn't run into was on these examples, the only thing to watch out for, and I'm going to kind of circle it here, um, or I'll put an arrow to it. Let's just say that your fraction... Um, when you add your fraction, sometimes your fraction can go over a whole. Uh, for example, on this one, it was 19 20ths. So if you know your fractions, 19 20ths is almost a whole. 20 20ths would be a whole. So let's just say you add one up and you get one that's like 23 20ths. Well, it's the same math that we've been doing you know, all this time. You would have to look at 23 20ths and think, okay... I've got to now change that, and I've got to change it from an improper fraction to a mixed number. Nothing's really going to change as far as you know what we've learned. Was you know back all the way before Christmas break, we learned how to do that. It's going to be the same math here. We're just now thinking about adding everything up, and so when that happens, you're just going to have to really think about okay, um, if if like on this problem, I had six plus two. I know I'm going to have 8 as a whole number, but if my fraction goes over a whole, I might have to add that extra whole in. And so I know that's going to happen in some of your examples in class. Um, and so when it happens, uh, I'm sure, you know, it'll it'll click and it'll make sense. But the, the basics about this skill, um, it's, it's pretty easy. Again, it, and I kind of keep using the same term. It's, it's just really an extension on what we've already done. It's not really anything new. It's just something that we're gonna take something we've already learned in class and just take it maybe to the next level or to the next step.